Well, Verena, still. can you hear us? No, it's still wrong. It's still, it's still it doesn't work. No, it doesn't work. Uh, it's two minutes past three, and I think we need to make a decision. Um, if she can't get in, then I think we just need to cancel this event and say that we will um, put her up uh, at, some, at another event, um, either in August, September, in, in the autumn. I, I think we cannot uh, proceed without uh, um, one introduction because everything is, is based upon that. This is very, very sad. Yeah. And Lee, and Leif, shall we just yeah. allow that to allow everyone into the into the room? Yeah. There, there are some we people allow, waiting. Yes. I think we, if we uh, as uh, organizers um, agree upon to to skip this meeting because we have technical problems with the, with the presenter and then we say uh, this presentation will um, will just be moved to another occasion. Okay. Do you agree, Jian Long? Uh, yes. Maybe we can just allow everybody to 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 to, to the room first. Twenty four. Yes. Twenty four. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So okay. we just uh, just uh, let everybody in. Okay. Okay. I'm, I agree. You want me to say say? Yeah. You know, and uh, Verena, say Verena it. want to be the co-host. Yes. Um, Is she now uh, a co-host? Could you please no, make well, Verena co-host? I'm trying to do, but I'm seeing a lot of people here. Yeah. Okay, can you hear me now? Oh, we yes. can hear you. <laughs> you know, we can oh hear my. you. <laughs> Verena, can you? Hello. Can... Hello, Hello. Yes. Verena. Okay. I don't this know what time, the problem that... is. A surprise. So, so you're all here now on my iPad, but at least this is working. <laughs> on on your iPad? Okay. Yeah, so I have. For... Yeah. Is it possible for you now to share your screen? Let me try. Well, I'm on my computer, but I hear you through my iPad. So. Oh. Um, you have to give me sharing permission. Yes. On my computer, mm -hmm. not the iPad. So ignore the iPad, please. Um, just if you give me, um, if you make me co-host or or give me sharing permission, then I should be able to share my screen. Eh, Pia, yes. ¿nos puedes ayudar en eso, por favor? Porque no puedo hacer la eh, co-host yo. And and leave. Yes. Pia? Yes, I think before the lecture, I would like to say something in Chinese to my to my yes to my colleagues. Yes, because, because we are not to... starting. We we let yeah. people in, and then we need to say to them that they need to press what language they want to want to listen Good. to. So we are not starting until we have two or three or four minutes with all people in. Okay, great. And then you Thank can you. say something in 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 um, Chinese. Uh, oh, you know uh, what. Excuse Maybe me? I'm in the wrong channel. Are you? Maybe that was the issue. Hang on. Never mind, that was not the issue. Okay, ignore me. Okay. Mm. Uh, then I think you can let people in. Just let me try this real quick. You see the right window? You see? Yes. Okay. yes, yes, and, yes, yes. And, Perfect. Yeah. Okay, good. Super. Okay, I'm all set. Okay. Hello, everyone <laughs> who is listening. <laughs>
we have had some some technical problems, uh, but hopefully now Verena is uh, clear for her presentation. But before we start, before we start, we have to say that this presentation will be uh, simultaneously translated into both Spanish and Chinese. So we need to inform you, for those of you who speak, would like to hear the presentation in English, you have to go uh, on the bottom of your screen, you see a globe, and there you click on English. Uh, Jialong, would you like to say something in Chinese and tell people, your people, how to uh, choose the Chinese channel, please? Thank you, Liv. 就是各位同事，大家晚上好啊。那么咱们呢，就是这一次翻译呢，是实际上是英语翻译成西班牙语，英语翻译成汉语。如果是咱们同咱们同事们，如果是想呢，就是在听英语的话呢，就是就是在这个频道就可以了。如果是想听汉语的话呢，就是点一下下边那个英语那个地方，选择中文，然后点进去就只能听到中文了。那么这是我们的同声传译啊。那么为我们做同声传译的是王宁老师，非常感谢。Thank you, Jalon. And um, uh, Ursula, would you like to say something in Spanish so that uh, Spanish people can press their Spanish channel? Por supuesto, gracias, Lee. Bueno, bienvenidos a todos. Muchas gracias por estar aquí. Tuvimos algunos problemas técnicos para comenzar. Pero ya estamos listos eh, para comenzar y les queremos comentar que esta charla está siendo traducida al inglés y al chino eh, y al español. Eh, y para los que quieran escuchar la charla en castellano deben eh, seleccionar el canal en español en el eh, icono de globo terráqueo que encontrarán en la parte inferior de su pantalla. Muchas gracias. Ok. Thank you, thank you, um, Ursula. Um, if everyone has now found their channel, I think Ursula Abi and Verena Abi can be kick off. Is it okay of for course. you, Verena? Thank you. Okay. Then, uh, welcome to this event. Engage with us. This arranged by the Design Literacy International Network. My name is Liv Merete Nielsen from Oslo Metropolitan University in Norway. Today we have invited Verena Pipke Yeltnes to present her ideas. A warm welcome to you, Verena, and we are very much looking forward to your presentation titled Sketch Noting Fostering Visual Literacy. And just a few words about the network. In this network, we are building upon the ideas of the Brazilian educator, Paulo Freire, and his writings and practice in the 1970s. And as then, competence is important for wise decisions. And wise decisions are of great importance if we want to move the world in direction of a better and greener tomorrow. And today, more and more decisions are made upon visual information and design solutions. Schools are therefore challenged to also include design and visual communication in their curricula for all. Through these events, we have experienced other fields of knowledge which have developed their special competence, such as health literacy, financial literacy and eco-literacy. We are planning to invite representatives from such literacies to present their ideas and hopefully we can learn something from them. And today, visual literacy is on the agenda. Uh, today is our 19th event. Through the events we have arranged so far, we have seen different perspectives and inputs which have contributed to our reflections, both in theory and practice. So now, Ursula, my co-chair, would you please give a short introduction to Verena? Please, Ursula, the screen is yours. 
Of course. Thank you, Lee. Well, good morning, good, uh, good evening, and good afternoon, everyone. And thanks for joining today. My name is Ursula Bravo from Universidad del Desarrollo in Chile. I would like to acknowledge the communication and research department of the School of Design to disseminate and translate this talk. And of course, thank you so much, Verena, for accepting our invitation. Verena Pokulkelnitz is an assisting, I'm sorry for the pronunciation of the name, <laughs> Verena's name is Norwegian, so it is difficult for me. Uh, is an assistant professor of industrial design and education director of the Industrial Designers Society of America. Her research focuses on the diffusion of design thinking and doing practices in design and non-design oriented disciplines with an emphasis on exploring visualization as a gateway to learning, comprehension, and creative confidence. She plans and facilitates workshops on sketchnoting, design thinking, and strategic planning in both academia and industry. Today, she will explore sketchnoting as it's related to the visual literacy definition in general and the five pillars of visual literacy theory visual language, visual thinking, visual learning, visual communication, and visual per perception. Sorry for my dogs. Verena, welcome again from now. You have full control of the session and you can share your screen. Thank you so much. Thank you, Ursula, and, and thank you, Liv, and thank you, Jung Long, and everybody in the design literacy um, network. And thank you everybody on the other side of the screens today for joining the session. Um, apologies again for um, the technical hiccup and our delay. Um, but here we are. Um, and I will jump right in to, uh, to this talk. So when I spoke with Liv and Ursula and Eric about this talk today, they encouraged me that I won't talk so much about the content of of, of the paper that, or the book chapter that I've, I've suggested uh, to be the topic of today's talk, but a little bit more also around the, the story behind it. So hence the story of sketch noting, fostering visual literacy is, is the title of the talk today. So please join me on this short journey, uh, which I will uh, start with the beginnings uh, of my own sketch noting. I will share a couple of my early sketch notes, planning sketch notes, and then I will uh, come full circle towards uh, visual literacy and how how sketch noting um, relates to it. So um, my own sketch note journey began uh, in 2014, and when I signed up for a workshop um, as part of the International Forum of Visual Practitioners, um, a sketch note workshop uh, facilitated by Eva Lot Alam, and it was a whole day. And at the end of the day. Um, I was highly disappointed um, that I had signed up for this workshop and not for the workshop next door. And little did I know that I should have just given it a couple more days because this changed my life. This changed how I do everything. So I, in hindsight, I'm so grateful that I signed up for, for this workshop that Ifa Lotolam introduced me to it. And because I... I started practicing sketch noting, applying it to everything. I infused it in literally everything I did from planning for my own work, for my classes. I taught it to my students. I used it in meetings. I sketch noted every meeting. And from then on, I loved attending meetings. And many of you might be sympathize that lots of meetings we all attend could have been shared in an email, but now I enjoy actually being part of it. Uh, and so I can sketch note them. And um, I even learned to sketch note and write upside down so I can facilitate meetings at like big conference tables, um, much to my students' delight to this day. Um, here are some examples that I will uh, run you through. Um, I started sketch noting readings, um, research that I did, and which helped me to, to see patterns and connections across. Um, so, um, sorry. So I did this, this really helped me in the understanding. And then I used this to further 
refine my readings into something like this, the different ways of knowing and how it relates to design thinking and doing. And um, it really helped me in my own understanding, but it also helped me in, in, in communicating it to others. Um, I used it for, uh, here's an example. When I started at Iowa State University, I created this visual career journey uh, from my time uh, in Germany growing up uh, behind the wall um, and in my, my early career um, at a University of Applied Sciences in Potsdam and then how I went through my graduate studies at Ohio State and then later on worked in Detroit, Michigan and taught for many years at the Savannah College of Art and Design and then came via Drexel in Philadelphia to Iowa State University and, and it helped me to communicate how my work connects. Um, and I can do this in words, but the connection, the visual and the verbal, which is, which is fundamental to sketchnoting, really helped me to make deeper sense of it. And fun fact on, on this visual here is that the German flag has the same colors at Iowa State University. So I felt that came full circle. Um, another sketch note I, I often um, uh, used to explain my, my early research steps is this one I created to uh, show how I link sketch noting to um, different ways of knowing design thinking um, and, and such. But I don't want to dwell too long on this. I want to move on to towards why we're here today. Um, so I learned sketch noting in 2014, and then, as I mentioned, applied it to pretty much everything, and then realized uh, by observing my students and my coworkers that there is potential for research. So um, since I I learned it myself, I taught it in in many sessions to different people from students to my own courses to disciplines ranging from ecology to engineering to food sciences and way beyond. And here you see a snippet um, of, of in yellow, it shows what I'm researching, the, the elements that I, that I focus on and then surrounded are all the activities that I've been doing at that point in time. So over the years, I was able to build my research agenda around sketch noting as a catalyst for design, and as such, also um, the the investigation into sketch noting towards uh, using it for towards visual literacy. And this is where I come now next. So in 2017, I met a, a, a colleague from Purdue University. His name is Teddy Lou, and. <clears throat> And he did the sketch note. Um, so he used to be a designer at Gravity Tank where he um, worked with a designer, Creighton Berman, who taught him who, uh, sketch noting. And um, so when Teddy uh, started to uh, teach at Purdue University, um, he also infused it in everything. So this was parallel to my own um, experience. And at the time I didn't know him, of course. Um, so he applied it to his classes. He created, he and his students created a, a student club, which they called Sketch Squad. And they, um, they would uh, have this um, technique where four students would work on one big um, um, visual, on one big poster and um, sketch noted together as a team of four. So they had uh, developed this, this wonderful system. Anyhow, so he and I met, and then we realized that we had an opportunity to compare our different approaches to how we teach and apply sketch noting and what this might mean. And among others, um, we uh, uh, sent proposals to the um, International Visual Literacy Association, which had their conference in Chicago in 2018, at the end of 2018, and we submitted proposals for a workshop and a talk. And unfortunately, I couldn't be there, but I helped develop the whole material together with Teddy. And, um, and we uh, called it the note-taking strategic framework that we, that we shared with the community there of, of visual literacy um, associates. Um, and so we investigated three main research questions. Um, how 
do we, how do different approaches, mainly our different approaches um, to sketch noting influence visual thinking? So we try to understand that um, what are additional opportunities um, for sketch noting beyond a visual note taking tool? So for some of you who, who have used it, it's, it's rooted in, in um, uh, Mike Rohde is the, the man who coined that term sketch noting and it came out of um, him being frustrated with taking linear notes and he combined his, his passion for, for sketching but also his profession as a graphic designer with note taking and created these visual notes. But there is so much more as Teddy and I have already observed at the time for ourselves. And then we had also observed that there is so much more to visual note taking for our students. And so we also investigated this as part of our research. And then we also wanted to understand how we can teach sketch noting as a visual framework to empower our students um, furthermore. So those are our three pillars we, we build our work up on. And um, then we were invited after the, the conference to submit a book chapter proposal for the a book of selected readings, um, the editor, Danilo uh, Balin, um, and the book at the time was called Crossing Boundaries uh, and Disciplines. And so that was in 2019. Um, and so we, we submitted our proposal, we were accepted, um, and then we started to, to work on making sense out of our work in relation to visual literacy. And as a first point in time, we not only immersed ourselves into visual literacy um, um, research, um, and with that we, we were able to use Runa Pedersen's um, image design, very comprehensive compilation of, of visual literacy uh, from its early, early stages to today, um, where he discussed um, many visual literacy definitions. And if you're familiar with that discipline, um, there are many of those definitions. It, it, it's almost everybody has a, a different point of view and, and they're all equally important. And so for us, Teddy and I, when we came to this, um, we were thinking, how can we make that sense for us? So I actually started sketch noting um, those definitions as a first step to make my own sense out of it. And so here you see um, the very first visual literacy um, definition uh, uh, defined by John Davis after one of the first uh, visual literacy meetings that I had started to interpret in my own visual language in my own visual words. Um, and from then, from there, I moved on to, and I'm only showing select versions of this, that they're more in, in our book chapter. Um, and so I started to visualize more of those to see how does it overlap with sketch noting. And so here we see Don Day's 1973, a very early definition um, who describes seeing as part of it, seeing leads to understanding leading to a, a shared universal meaning. Um, or below, Flory discussing one of the first approaches towards a visual uh, literacy theory. Um, there is a visual language that exists. People can do and think visually. People can do, can and do learn visually. And people can and should express themselves visually. And with this, we found our home that we felt sketch noting fits right into into what has been discussed in general. Apologies. Um, and so comparing this to the, the sketch noting definition that was coined by Mike Rohde, who, and this is a sketch note I did adapt it to, to his. So in, in sketch noting, you're combining the words with the visual. Um, so you, you, con you create visual maps of what you he hear, see, and think. Um, and create your own visual language with that. And so having this at the back of our minds, um, we went further and, and visualized at more visual literacy definitions. And so, um, for example, um, Considine, who's talking about, there is a comprehension that happens 
in your mind and then the communication that can be verbally and visually um, because you can also create um, or make him uh, very traditional. Uh, uh, it's been long-standing uh, definition. So you see it, you, you imagine, and then you draw, you visualize. Um, and then um, of course, there's Marie of Girinu, who is a major driver in the world of visual literacy, who has uh, defined 10 points of convergence for visual literacy. And we picked out a few that we felt were especially um, prone, uh, especially connected to um, sketch noting. And so, <clears throat> apologies. There's a visual language that parallels verbal language. We felt that verbal and visual that's, um, hang on. I will need one second. Give me one moment. I apologize. Can you hear me again? Sorry, yes. I had a yes, we can uh, hear you. Sincere apologies. Um, um, I shouldn't breathe so deeply. Um, <clears throat> um and then uh, the point eight were visual communication, visual learning and visual thinking is inextricably linked to visual literacy. We also felt that this is very much so in line with, with sketch noting. Um, but then the point that uh, I was asked to talk about is, is, so this book chapter took many, many, many iterations. The visualization of the visual literacy definitions you saw took also many iterations. And it really helped us to <clears throat> get to the bottom of, of, of how sketchnoting connects to visual literacy. Um, however, uh, throughout those uh, iterations, um, we had many reviewers who gave us feedback on, on our um, um, different versions. And this ranged from, and that was really surprising to us, it ranged from, um, uh, one reviewer thought that was an amazing approach, uh, loved the visualization of the visual literacy definitions and thought we should be awarded something. Um, another one just thought it was quite interesting. And then yet another one thought that was, didn't see the use of this, of, of why would we want to visualize the definitions and um, why is this important? So we had really the whole width of the, the whole spectrum from this is wonderful to this makes no sense to me. And so we had to continue to develop our, our, um, our message and um, again, dig, dig deeper. And I'm really grateful for our editor, editor to having pushed us further because we felt that we find, eventually arrived at something that we can, we can share. Um, and that is a contribution to um, uh, to visual literacy and to and to sketch noting. So, um, uh, and so the following comparison that I'm I'm going to run you through uh, um, that's my doc now, um, and we also uh, have a, a relation to those five pillars that we were mentioned earlier. Um, okay, so. Um, a little bit of a breakthrough came when we looked at Beaupre's um, uh, uh, summary of, of how visual literate people apply um, grammar and syntax of visual language and translate visual language to verbal language and vice versa. So that was a, an aha moment for us. 
um, where we felt really at home as verbal and visual, the connection and the translation thereof um, that relates highly to sketch noting. And so um, with that, we developed this visual, um, which is at the core of, of the paper. Sorry, of the... Verena? Eric, we can't hear you. Hello. Can you hear me again? Now I can hear you. Yes. Did That's everybody disappear or just me? Uh, you, it was only you who disappeared. But I disappeared on both my devices. So I don't know what's going on here today. So it will, it will, yeah. So let me just um, get back to where I was. Yes, this is okay. And, and thank you everyone for hanging in there with me. I never had this many um, technical difficulties, but there's a first for everything. Do not worry, we can hear you and see the presentation. It's okay. That's wonderful. And you can probably also hear my squeaking dog in the back. So, um, okay, so this is where I think I left off. So we were excited to have found Bob Pree's definition, um, the translation between visual and verbal language and vice versa. And so what we did with that, um, it has always been discussed that dual coding defined by uh, Paivio, uh, who discusses that there, and, and this is really just in a nutshell, um, that there is a verbal and a nonverbal stimuli and that's being simultaneously processed and the referential connections um, foster memory and retention. This is something that we talk a lot about in connection to sketch noting. And so we plug Bob Pree's, um definition in the middle as you can see in this, uh, in, in this visual. And so in, in our opinion, then uh, sketch nodes are the visual representation coming from a dual coding. So you process the information verbally and visually. You can translate uh, uh, visual and verbal, vice versa. And then it's all accumulate, accumulated in, in, yeah, in those visual maps that you can create through sketch noting. So we were very excited about that. And then, um, hang on. And then we, we uh, summarized our discussion. Um, and with this understanding, we approached the five pillars of visual literacy theory again and contextualized sketch noting in relation to them. And so um, I don't wanna go too much into depth here. Um, so so these, these elements, um, so sketch noting finds uh, a home and, and of course visual communication you visually communicate through your visual own visual um, interpretations you create your own visual language um, and it's very important to note that um, as a sketch noter you, you, you're not required or, or expected to to be able to sketch well it's something that comes with it just as as you learn the verbal language you learn your visual language um, and as right now I have an accent, but you still understand me. Um, it's the same with sketch noting. You might have a visual accent, but you can you can be visually understood. Um, it can be used to to learn visually, to think visually, and it and, and accumulates in in the visual perception. Um, so yeah, this was pretty much um, what I had in store for you today. Uh, Thank you for listening. I hope it was a little bit interesting. Um, and I apologize again for all the, all the technical difficulties um, I brought to this today. Um, so in summary, it took us five years to go from uh, uh, the first contact I had with Teddy Lute in our collaboration to having uh, successfully published this book chapter. It was a long, long journey with, with uh, many roadblocks that in my opinion made our work so much better. 
Um, so for the ones of you who who are working on, on publications and it takes longer than expected, um, it's part of the process that um, I learned it really helped me to um, yeah to to create meaning um, that I can that I can stand behind. So yeah, thank you so much, and um, I will close my part with that and stop the screen share. Thank you so much, Verena. This was very interesting, and I'm also. You, you handled these technical problems very well. <laughs> and Eric, uh, are you uh, able to, to, can we hear you? Because with I, questions I, I, and answers. Can you hear me now? Now I can hear you, but Fantastic, earlier I could. Yes. So Eric, <laughs> if you would like to, to um, take some of the questions and answers for Verena. And Verena, it was so nice to hear. And I really uh, appreciate it also to, to read your article. So if you have any questions, I know that Ursula needs to um, will be going very shortly. So um, Ursula, why don't we start with you, um, if you don't mind. But I, uh, before, before, before Ursula comes in, I have a question for you, Verena, about um, semiotics, you know, in language, there's a se sem semiotics and um, I just wanted to ask you, you were talking about this reading and, and, and you know, um, coding and, you know, decoding the, the sketch noting and so on. And um, I just wanted to, you may or may not have kind of thought about whether semiotics could be used, you know, the, the idea of semiotics, the theory of sem semiotics about language and how you read stuff can be used actually in your field that you're doing. You might have not, I, I don't know. It's not a trick question. It's about whether you have considered that. Um, tangentially, um, but I, I agree. There is a, um, um, definitely um, um, an opportunity to um, sh discuss sketch noting in, in the semiotics term. So really compare it to the development of language and, and the theory and the meaning behind, absolutely. Um, and while preparing for this talk, um, I realized again that there is so much more um, that we can do in this regard, in this direction, um, that I really, um, for myself, um, want to pick this up again and, and further develop it. Um, because for many, and, um, and I don't know how many of you in the audience have come across sketch noting or doing it yourself, people are usually very fascinated when they see my notes or other people's notes, and it's very engaging. And then I tell them this is my research, and then they ask me, "Really?" So I have had mm -hmm. often the the response that they don't necessarily take it so seriously, but when they do it themselves, or I see it in my students, um, not just in mine, but a across the disciplines, not just in in the design students, um, there is really so much we can take away from it. So I would love to to actually elevate um, the meaning of it and the colleagues. <laughs> sorry. That was my dog saying hi to Ursula's dog. Um, um, I lost my train of thought. That, that, is, that is okay. You were talking about the research that the colleagues are asking about. This is a research and, and they, you know, sometimes they're you know, surprised that you know, they are fascinated by your sketch notes, you know, the sketches, and that they are surprised that it is this part of your research. Right. Has that kind of... Oh, yeah, so, and then, so uh, I kicked off this talk today that Eva Lotalam taught me sketch noting, and, and she's wonderful in further developing and refining, and she now calls it pragmatic sketching. So she no longer calls it sketch noting, and this, I believe, really hits the nail on the head. And uh, with your comment, Eric, I think there is something uh, of value that if we look into semiotics and pragmatic sketching slash sketch noting and how we can further define define that. So yeah. Thank, thank you so much, Verena. Can I then go to Ursula? Then we go to, um, those are questions by um, Maria, and then we go to Francesco, okay? Ursula? Thank you, Eric. Um, estoy en castellano, sí. Bueno, eh, me pareció excelente tu charla. En verdad, muchas gracias, Verena. Muy interesante. Creo que pudiste como 
empaquetar temas que al menos yo tenía un poco eh, sueltos, dispersos, y te lo agradezco mucho. Eh, me gustaría saber si el enfoque de Visual Literacy está de alguna manera vinculado y de qué manera con los estudios visuales que vienen más bien desde los estudios culturales y la antropología visual. Si hay ahí alguna conexión, si la han podido explorar o más bien van por, podríamos decir, carriles separados. Was I in the wrong channel? Should I have been in the Spanish channel? No, no, it was translated, uh, Verena. Okay. Oh, um, okay, okay, okay. But the, the question was, you know, whether the visual literacy approach is related in any way to visual studies. Oh, so I, I want to admit I'm not an expert in visual literacy. I'm an expert in sketchnoting, and I'm, I investigated sketchnoting um, in relation to visual literacy. Um, I do think that there is a, uh, the, from my own opinion and from my own research, I think there's a strong correlation between visual studies and visual literacy. Um, it goes hand in hand um, because you, the learning in visual studies, I believe supports visual understanding of like the, having general visual literacy, but I would refer to an expert in visual literacy on that. I don't want to claim uh, something that I'm not too familiar with. Okay, can we can we go to thank you so much? Uh, Gracias, you, know, being, you know, so open about yeah, you are not all you cannot be all expert on everything, can we? So it's uh, mm -hmm. it's great, Verena. And um, can we go to Maria, please? Uh, Maria, you had a question. Um, is Maria Teresa? Sorry, I can't see the last. Uh, there was a there was a questions you had about um, the translations. I have. What do you think we lose in creative and communication process? Maria, would you like to ask a question? Hello, Maria. Can't hear you. No, is is Maria with us or not? No. Okay. Uh, there was a there was a there's a question. It um this I've got a, the English translation. Yeah. Elena, and says, yeah. what do you think we lose? In creative and communication process, when we do not consider drawing as language. Yeah, so I, um, yeah, I can happily talk to this, and maybe coming from the angle of, of, um, and you might have experienced that too. So whenever I speak to somebody, um, in, in, uh, let's keep it in sketch noting, and they tell me they cannot sketch, so they therefore they don't think that they can sketch note, and they often say I'm not creative, and so. Um, for, for many sketching, the ability to draw or to sketch is the litmus test for creativity. Um, and although this is not, although this has been debunked, right? Um, it, for many, it still feels that way. So um, drawing as language, in, in my opinion, helps one have a visual outlet of, of their creative thoughts and ideas. Um, that doesn't mean that one has to be able to to draw photorealistically, and that's why I um, um, foster the sketch noting so much in my environment, in my own environment, in my own teaching, because it's so easy to learn. There is so the 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 success, the feeling of success and and, and satisfaction is is very quickly. As you remember how I started off my talk, I had a whole day workshop. And although I'm coming from the industrial design um, uh, with an industrial design background and I sketch my, my whole life, um, I didn't feel comfortable with it. And it took me a whole, almost a whole week for it to really sink in. And since then, it really even helped my own creativity to have another outlet. And so um, I think that it's, it's linked, it's highly linked for many people. And if we can find a way to, to give people the confidence to put pen on paper, and no matter how it looks and for them to accept it, I believe that they can, it actually helps creative creativity uh, and, and communication. Thank, thank you, Verena. Um, Francesco, would you like to um, ask your question? And then we go to Leif and then we have, um, uh, there's a questions from Natalia. 
Can you hear me? Yes, Francisco. Okay, congratulations, yes. uh, Ursula, uh, Ola. Uh, Spanish or English? It's up to you. As you um, want, so if you in are, Chinese. Asking, if you you can try Chinese, Chinese. My Chinese is good, but not so good. That's why <laughs> probably it's better but, to continue But don't forget, you need to go to the Chinese channel then to ask the Chinese <laughs> or Spanish channel. Then, okay, so... I don't want to do from English. Just, just help, um, help, help the translators, that's all. Uh, first of all, congratulations. I joined later the, the speech because in Milano we have the design week, but I followed the, the final part and I know your, uh, your research and what you publish and the congratulations. My question is this, and I would like to ask you related to these topics, uh, evidence-based. I just finished to have a contradiction uh, discussion with Ken Friedman no? this morning to, uh, about, uh, for example, my approach, uh, visually approach in my book uh, to express concept, uh, concept with visual map, uh, uh, drawing, more or less, not the same, but similar like yours. And that I love it. And I think that is the best way, especially when we talk about education and coaching. But uh, a lot of science, master scientists, they consider these, uh, uh, let me say, too fancy, too mm -hmm. aesthetical and less uh, uh, scientific. And the question is, what do you think even if I am absolutely agree with you that the best way to continue in order to uh, educate someone in the creative and cultural industry is visually, no? to express science and visually expression. And, uh, in, and then concluding, I, I also study with a lot of semiotic master. Umberto Eco was my professor at Politecnico Milano, Fabio Fabris in semiotics, uh, uh, because semiotics is different kind of semiotics. But what do you think, you, like scholar, no? because you are a scholar, you are presenting this in a design discipline. Design discipline want to be considered like science and science need evidence. When you present your sketch, your visual map, there is no evidence in the result that you produce. That is my question. Well, I don't know if it's clear. Yeah, wonderful. Thank you so much for this question. And, and um, yeah, I can absolutely relate to this. So it, I'm gonna answer this in like, uh, different approaches so science needs evidence needs numbers um and therefore um we need a like in my own research we we oftentimes i um, connect um with scholars here on on my campus to help with that to help uh collect that particular data and it's really hard to measure uh someone's creative confidence for example and so this is to your point um it's not easy to 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 pinpoint that. However, over the years, uh, I've collected um, um, data um, like through numbers, but also through observation um, of the benefit of sketch noting from um, uh, increased memory and retention, increased uh, class engagement, um, increased. Um, sketch confidence, I can, that I can actually visually measure. So I can see as an, as an uh, evaluator, how uh, the sketch ability changes from um, um, hesitant, doubtful lines to very consistent um, and, and yeah, um, consistent lines. So that can visually can be measured. So um, the, 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 the data that's being collected and the data that's being evaluated is being evaluated a little bit differently, maybe than um, I, I cannot count necessarily, but I can I can develop rubrics that help me to to bring the evidence to that. So that's that, but it's not necessarily easy. And in the scientific world, and as an example, over the years I applied to several um, NSF grants um, with colleagues here. Um, the last one, for example, was with a chemical engineer um, and a colleague from education focusing on assessment. So we had a very solid case. We had a very strong case in our opinion, and we have proof that it works. Um, but the, the evaluators didn't see the value because for them, as you said, it might be too fancy. Um, it might be too aesthetic and they don't understand why, why we should teach somebody how to simply visualize and communicate on paper um, for them to actually improve in, in their own discipline. Thank you for translating NSF, um, didn't do that. Uh, so yeah, it's, it's, I absolutely agree. Um, but then if you also think about um, 
the 21st century skills, part of the, uh, one of them is creativity. Um, and how do we, how do we teach that and how do we foster that? So at some point, I, I, from my end, I just keep pushing and hoping that um, the scientific world will um, in general be more open to our approaches to, to yeah, visual communication and all the benefits that come with that. Super, super. Uh, and thanks so much. Or maybe let me let me also say that probably it's in our responsibility, like educator, because we are not talking about design product or designing solution, but in education, don't pay too much attention to this kind of metrics, because the impact of what we are trying to do, and also using your tools, we will metrics this in the next generation. That's why it's impossible to continue follow metrics when we are talking about education. That is my point, and thanks so much to all the team. Thank you. Uh, Liv, uh, Eric, Ursula, congratulations, fantastic. Francesca, thank, so thank you so much. Um, can we go to Liv, and then we thank go you. to uh, Natalia. Uh, thank you. Uh, just following up on this um, former question about um, uh, science and research, uh, as I am from education research, I can see this, you do the questionnaire, you do the interviews, so I don't see any problems with this not being, um, uh, being research or, or having uh, value in, in that that respect. So so I think it, it and it's especially your your article and which I would like to have a comment on, because when I read your article, um, I was looking upon you you um, said something about figure two. It doesn't matter. I, I can't I can't show it show it now. But but in figure two, you said something. It was so easy for your students to to pick up uh, the the note sketching because it was uh, squares and circles and it was verbal text and when i when i read through your article and you said something about socrates and and cave drawings this is where it started so when i looked at um, figure two, this is really um, advanced, complicated, because it's verbal language. But this is something about our school system, because the school system is so much focusing on verbal text instead of visual literacy. So um, in a way, we are all of us say, oh, it's so easy when it's just squares and, and circles and verbal text, but it's really advanced. But what you are doing with um, uh, this sketching, note sketching and sketching in, in general is to sort of have not a lower level, but an other level, which is, which uh, in my point of view is as valuable as the verbal text. So do you have any thoughts on <laughs> education in general for the future from your point of view? Because I know so much, I know that um, from different um, countries, it's very different how they value uh, visual skills, uh, visualization from early early school and, and up to university. But uh, from your point of view, in your country, do you have any thoughts on um, how you should would like it to be? Actually, I do. <clears throat> and coming from Germany, some of the German school system, and now living in the U.S., and and, and maybe that's across the globe. Um, it, it, Asking yourself, so if, if there are budget cuts at a school, traditionally what they cut first is, is the art classes, um, and um, which, is, which is really a shame. And so the, if, you, and, or if you just look at the balance of, of art classes versus all the other classes, it's, it's not very balanced. Um, and so I, I do agree with you. I believe that if we were able to really infiltrate um, art in general, but also visual communication, 
into, into our overall educational system. It's not going to be for everyone, but for some students, it will really help understand. It will really help comprehend and, and um, yeah, really um, becoming subject matter experts. So um, to that point, um, I once did a, a comparison study with electrical engineers and industrial designers, and um, I followed a group of both and turned this actually into a visual paper. I submitted at ENPDE a couple of years ago. And so one of my, my final, my, my summary, my visual summary shows that the, the electrical engineers through visualization, through sketch noting, really for them, the first step is subject matter expertise. So they, they have to fully understand and comprehend a concept before they can visualize it. And I believe if we were to in, include this, infiltrate this in our education system, that would be really beneficial. As opposed to the industry designers who um, um, learn to sketch, but many of them have this barrier to put pen on paper. And so they avoid practicing and then they, they don't feel comfortable and then they lose their creativity ability or so they think and then then they they just stop working but through sketch noting they the paper is not so intimidating anymore and then they actually start practicing and so for the for the visual people it really helps to to embrace the paper as a piece where they can um, share their creativity and their thoughts whether it is no matter what the topic um, and for people who are coming from a non uh, art, uh, non design area discipline, it really helps with with subject matter expertise, and then it goes towards sketch confidence and creative confidence. However, if we were to really bring this into the educational system, really infiltrate it, I think it would be beneficial for for many. And interestingly, here in Iowa, and it's been a few years back, I was contacted by um, a school teacher who told me that she's incorporating sketch noting. In, in her teaching. And if you look for um, actually like book publications on sketch noting currently, the most that are out there are towards teachers in, in education, not higher education, but in, in school. And so they're bringing um, sketch noting to their own um, yeah, classroom and many different disciplines. So it's, yeah, not just my opinion, but they, many others think that I could pull out a couple of books out of my bookshelf. But yeah, it would be thanks, wonderful thanks, if we Marina. could. Yeah. All right, a last question from um, Natalia. Would you mind to ask your question, please? Natalia Yanez? Natalia, I just, sorry, Paulette. 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 Con, 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 Sorry, my apologies. Hi, Paulette. Hola. Eh, no, lo que mi pregunta era relacionada con el enseñar en particular a los adultos a, a tomar notas a través del, de los sketch eh, cuando tienen el prejuicio de que dibujan mal. Entonces eso representa una barrera de entrada. Yo no puedo, yo no sé porque dibujo mal. Si hay alguna forma de acompañarlos a superar eso para que eh, puedan tener todos los beneficios que, que se han mostrado hoy día de, de esta estrategia. I was not in the right channel. So... I don't speak Spanish. Sorry. That's, a, that's okay. It's, it was about um, adult education. And um, as I understand, um, let me have a look. Um, it was about um, how, how do you, uh, I don't know, um, kind of overcome prejudice about... Uh, Paulette, would you like to ask maybe the question again? Try. I need to be in English channel, Verena. Hang on. I have to. Um, and, and I would like to know why do you have so many devices? Well, for so you some reason, my don't computer does not does not work. The sound does not work on my computer, so I'm on my iPad. But on my iPad, 
I have okay. a problem with finding my channel. Oh. Are you, are you okay. in the English channel now? Yes. Paulette, can you ask your question again, please? Sorry. ¿Cómo acompañar a los adultos que eh, dicen que no saben dibujar a superar esa barrera y poder avanzar en, en, en todo lo que mostraste hoy día y que sin duda parece tener una serie de, de, de un impacto positivo, aunque no haya sido demostrado científicamente, ¿cierto? En esta idea de observar de recoger la realidad, de establecer conexiones, eh, de poder articular, incluso si soy ambiciosa de avanzar a, a comprender de una manera compleja lo que sea que se está aprendiendo. Thank you. Um, wonderful question. Give me 45 minutes <clears throat> and I will introduce uh, these adults to sketch noting. Um, I have a very, very, I think, believe sensitive way of, of allowing people to put pen on paper and to slowly develop their own sketch confidence. Um, the, the visuals that are in my paper in the book chapter uh, and Teddy's in mine, to Liv's point, do look a little more sophisticated. I, I agree with that, but um, the the first hurdle is to accept that a line on the on paper does not have to be photorealistic. It does not have to be perfect. So, um, a, a quick example: I'm going to sketch you. Um, I find a good pen. Um, a bicycle, real quick. I'm going to hold this up. No, I'm not holding this up. Hang on. It's blue. Or... Yeah, I hang on. Give me one second. So this is a bicycle, right? It doesn't look good. I mean, this is not going to, to win um, an award of any kind, but um, this is a way of of allowing you to, to visually communicate in the simplest way possible. And, and it does take a little bit of practice and it does take a little bit of overcoming the hurdle of, of allowing yourself to do this. Um, so it, it will not happen immediately. And if I'm referring back to how I opened up this talk today, it took me a week to accept um, that sketch noting is, is something more than just connecting words and, and visuals and that it can actually really benefit um, myself, me greatly. So um, yeah, but uh, I might need 55 minutes. So give me 55 minutes and um, I happily uh, teach anybody sketch noting and then um, we can measure the success together. What, what we'll do is we'll, um... We'll, we'll organize a, a workshop in the yes, future. Then. Okay, Thank I'm you so much it. for the talk. Thank you <laughs> to the interpreters, you know, uh, both interpreters, you know, doing a great job. It was amazing. I was watching Paulette uh, mouth moving and it was the English coming out. It was just, it was like a movie. It was dubbed. It was just perfect. It was synchronization. Um, but I wanted to say about, I really enjoyed the talk and I just, uh, the next month talk is by Je Ping. Uh, well, um, and he'll be talking about um, uh, research he was looking at in his uh, pedagogies, um, and we are really looking forward to to his talk. So thank you so much, Verena, uh, you know, bearing with us with the techno technological issues, and and definitely we'll have you again, um, again, uh, you know, um, in the future and do something hands on, some sort of um, you know workshop. Okay, so uh, really, Just really a good. Short Go. Eric, just, just to say the date for uh, Seng Ping's um, presentation, it will be July 5th. That's correct. It's important. Yes. Yes. So and I I've to pasted also the link to it in, into chat. Right? Yeah. So okay. thank you so much, everybody. Have a, have a wonderful um, night, day, morning, whenever you are. And we hope to see you again um, um, next month. In the meantime, um, stay safe. Bye bye.
Thank you, everybody. Bye. Bye. Thank, thank you, you Verena. Thank you bye. so much. Bye, Ursula. Bye, bye. 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 bye, bye. And thank you for wonderful questions, everybody. Bye. Take care, bye. everyone.